to go. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the latest installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Advanced Analytics with William McKnight, sponsored today by Precisely and Realtio. Today, William will be discussing common mis misconceptions about master data management. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. To open the Q&A panel or the chat panel, you will find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And just to note, the chat defaults to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely change it to network with everyone. As always, you, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me turn it over to Sue from Precisely for a brief word from our first sponsor. Sue, hello and welcome. Hey, thanks, Shannon. And thanks to everybody for joining us today. As she said, my name is Susan Pollock, and I'm the Senior Manager of Product Marketing for Precisely. Let's jump right into Master Data Management Powered by Data Integrity. To compete and thrive in today's dynamic economy, your core business needs to be right, compliant, and just as important, it must be available wherever it's needed by the business faster than ever. We're talking about the core master data that describes your business. One of the misconceptions about master data, not to steal William's thunder, is that, it's, that most people think it's mostly customer or product data. This is not so. All of these are examples of master data that your business relies on to drive data-driven decisions, improve operational processes, and manage your risk. And as sources get more diverse and complex, and data continues to increase in volume and velocity, modern master data management is becoming a business imperative, yet it has its challenges. Each of these quadrants that you see on the slide represent challenges that every organization faces. One of the biggest obstacles is that we typically see is poor data literacy. This can be something as simple as having exactly the same name for a term, but two totally different meanings, depending on which line of business within your company you're in. Or you can have things that have slightly different names and you think they're the same, but they're not. And you just don't know what the source of truth is. You don't know where to go get the right data. And this is all poor data literacy. So if you have poor data literacy, that's almost always going to result in the lack of data readiness. As modern master data management has emerged, just having data that's complete and conforming and fits in the field that it goes into in the application is not anywhere close to enough. The bar has moved really way up. Data now has to be trustworthy. It has to be timely. It has to be the right data, the right place, the right time. And that process has to be seamless. There can't be any gaps in the data. So if you have poor data literacy, you end up with a lack of data readiness. And that exposes you to a lot of data risk without documented lineage or no traceability of those changes. You tend not to know what to protect and the data that needs to be, and not knowing what data needs to be protected and encrypted. And something that a lot of people don't think about these days that is becoming more and more important is that you retain data longer than it's needed for a valid business purpose. A lot of the requirements and rules now say that you're not allowed to hang on to data if you don't need it. You can't have it if you don't have a demonstrated business use. And the last thing that we see is lack of sustainability. A key indicator here is your data lack, your data updates lag reality. If you don't move at the speed of business because of either manual tasks or complex or incomplete processes, and you have a conflict around custodianship and ownership of the data. Custodianship is who maintains it, while ownership is who's empowered to make the decisions about what good data looks like. So successful master data management has to have clear and automated processes. To achieve your goals, you need what we call data integrity. Data integrity is data with maximum accuracy, consistency, and context for confident business decisions. But data integrity is a journey, and master data management is just one piece of that journey. The Precisely Data Integrity Portfolio can help you wherever you are on that journey. Over 12,000 businesses leverage Precisely technology across the globe to build value and work seamlessly with both your traditional and modern tech stacks to help you optimize your investments now and in the future. 
the Precisely Data Integrity Portfolio empowers you with data integration to break down those data silos and derive real-time analytics quickly by building modern data pipelines and models or data governance to manage data policy and processes with greater insight into your data's meaning, lineage, and impact. Data quality and observability to deliver data that's accurate, consistent, and fit for purpose across operational and analytical systems and proactively uncover data anomalies to act before they become costly downstream issues. Precisely Data Integrity also includes the ability to leverage location intelligence to derive and visualize spatial relationships to reveal critical context for better business decisions or enrich your business data with expertly curated data sets containing thousands of attributes for faster, confident decisions. The Precisely Data Integrity solutions all work together and are powered by machine learning intelligence to optimize your teams, resources, and investments. With Data Integrity Powered Master Data Management, you can expect outcomes like enterprise-wide understanding so that you have a recognized and reliable system of record. You've minimized those data silos. Your data stories are democratized and you take action on trusted data. Your data is fit for purpose with enterprise-wide data governance. You can look at cross-domain intelligence. You've got visibility into lineage, impact, and relationships, and you've enriched your data with data sets and location intelligence for more precise data outcomes. And greater data policy management allows you to believe that you are working with reduced risks to, while maximizing your compliance with data that's standardized and normalized, and you're leveraging machine learning and automation to be proactive in understanding that risk. And last but certainly not least, there's a more sustainable process by being able to automate and reduce costly manual tasks and rework. You can scale on demand and you've got the flexibility to adapt to emerging requirements that are undoubtedly going to be coming. The value of data integrity powered master data management is that your business will be able to go faster, be more agile and improve the quality of your most important data so your business can compete and thrive in today's dynamic economy to quickly find insights and adapt to data changes in your key data, have complete confidence in your critical business data and ensure that your master data management strategy is flexible and sustainable to grow with your business in an ever-changing and expanding business environment. As the leader in data integrity, Precisely's data integrity solutions contain everything you need to deliver accurate, consistent, contextual data to your business wherever and whenever it's needed. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. It's going to be a great conversation. If you want to continue the conversation here, please visit our website by visiting the scan code or uh, uh, contacting us if you'd like to have a, a chat about how we might be able to help you out wherever you are on your journey. Back to you, Shannon. Thank you so much for kicking us off and thanks to Precisely for sponsoring. If you have questions for Sue, feel free to submit them in the Q&A section of your screen as she'll be joining us in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. And now let me turn it over to Ian from Realtio for a brief word from our second sponsor. Ian, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon, and thank you everybody for joining. I'm gonna share my screen here real quick before diving into my portion of today's session. So uh, I'm the Senior Director of Product at Reltio, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is how at Reltio, we solve master data management challenges that our businesses have. And so if we look at our customer base, it's really about getting their core data and creating that single source of truth that they can rely and trust and drive business decisions. And fragmented data is a problem in every organization, every enterprise. Data is typically siloed, it's dirty, it needs to be cleansed, consolidated, unified, and that's where we come in. But beyond that, though, we also uh, provide very high performance, low latency APIs. So our systems are designed to be operational and transactional in nature. So we're real time in the sense that anytime data is being changed or updated across the enterprise, we can ingest those updates and also push out those updates to downstream systems uh, within a very short time frame. So that, that's really kind of what differentiates us is those real-time capabilities. 
And then the third thing here is we offer very quick time to value. So we've proven with our customers that we can get them up and running with their MVP, MDM implementation within 90 days. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. And then our MDM has been proven to save a lot of costs and drive organizational efficiency because of the way we do things and because of how we set up our systems. So we're driving real business impact for all of our customers day in and day out. Oops. All right. So uh, what, the key way we drive business value within 90 days and we can master our customers' data within 90 days is because of what you see here. This visual shows you just a high-level diagram of what we call a velocity pack, which is a pre-configured uh, out-of-the-box data model along with rules and configurations that are all pre-packaged and pre-created. And in essence, this is offering customers an out-of-the-box MDM where everything is defined by RELTIO because we are the experts. We know what our customers are doing with all of their data. And so by industry, by verticals, whether it's life sciences, healthcare, insurance, financial services, we have created very specific custom velocity packs. And the name velocity just means uh, that the solutions are very fast and they can, our customers can get up and running very, very quickly. And as I mentioned, within 90 days, we're seeing implementations that have been stood up because of our prescriptive approach and because we're leaning on years of our experience and all of these verticals and helping guide our customers to set up the exactly the right kind of implementation that they need for their master data management needs. And in addition, we have pre-built connectors to many of the popular application integrations and data enrichment providers that our customers typically use. So a few business examples here of how we're driving IT savings with our customers. So you can see with these logos, we work with some of the largest customers in the world. One example that I want to point out is AstraZeneca, a leading life sciences company. They have used rel MDM to consolidate 66 different MDM sources into three. And because of that, they're now saving 3.6 million pounds a year because of what RELTIO was able to do. And this is just one example. We've done a, a Forrester study to show the overall economic impact of MDM. And because of what we're doing, we're uh, saving companies nine months of time to add data sources, increasing operational efficiency by 78%, and some of these other data points that you see here. So the business impact here is far and wide. And then, with the Forrester wave, you can see that RELTIO has been selected as the number one in MDM strategy. And for four years in a row now, we've been consistently ranking high in the Forrester wave. And we've earned the highest score in all of these criteria that you see here, including matching entity resolution, multi-domain scalability, and so on. And some of these quotes that I'm pulling from the report are the real-time AI-driven aspects of it that customers really come to appreciate. It's providing that customer 360 view. So not just static entities, but also the transactional and interaction pieces that give you the entire 360 view of the customer. We also have machine learning models that can help customers uh, integrate entities, do entity resolution, matching, merging in an automated fashion. And then behind the scenes, we have uh, graph modeling capabilities that allow us to generate those relationships in an automated fashion. And all of this happens on a secure, scalable platform. And then last couple points here is that we are available on all three public clouds, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and AWS. We're a cloud-native solution. That's how we were built from day one. And that's something many of our customers really appreciate. And then lastly, we're not just about customer data. We also offer MDM capabilities in other domains like product, supplier, asset, reference data, and so on. And then we have a lot of uh, options to enrich that data with popular data providers that might exist. So I'll end with this slide, which is uh, obviously William's going to go into this in a lot more detail. But we hear a lot of these myths and misconceptions from our customers when they think about master data management. The three that I want to highlight that we come across is that 
an MDM is a complex project that doesn't really deliver on business value or outcomes. That's definitely not the case. I talked about AstraZeneca and I'm re-emphasizing it here where they lowered their overall total cost of ownership by 3.6 million pounds by working with Reltio. The second myth is that MDM takes many, many years to implement, but that's not the case as well with Velocity Packs, with Reltio, with our prescribed implementation methodology. We really break it down into milestones that are achievable. So we focus on uh, an MVP implementation. So not the entire sort of boil the ocean type implementation, but getting in a couple of data sources, integrating those, creating a customer profile and showcasing the value and doing that in a quick manner within three months. That's been something that's been a game changer for us and customers are really impressed by how quickly they can stand up MDM using Reltio. And then the last one is MDM is not just about data duplication, which many of our customers might think going into a sales cycle. It's actually so much more than that. It off, we offer so many more capabilities than just deduplication. There's data integration, there's cleansing, standardization, there's enriching the data, there's governance and compliance and so much more that's wrapped around it. And so we, when we work with our customers, we work with them at that holistic level, not just about data duplication. So that's all I wanted to share today. Um, I'll now hand it back over to Shannon. And thank you so much. And thanks to Realtio for sponsoring. If you have questions for Ian, feel free to submit the questions in the Q&A section of your screen as you'll be joining us in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. And thanks to both of our sponsors for helping to make these webinars happen. Now let me introduce our speaker for the series, William McKnight. William has advised many of the world's best known organizations. His strategies form the information management plan for leading companies in numerous industries. He is a prolific author and a popular keynote speaker and trainer. He has performed dozens of benchmarks on leading database, data lake, streaming, and data integration products. And with that, I'll give the floor to William to get his presentation started. William, hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you, Shannon. And thank you, Sue and Ian. That was a great setup to what I'm here to talk about. Both Sue and Ian, Ian, excuse me, got into misconceptions about master data management. We all see a lot of misconceptions out there. I spent a lot of my time justifying these MDM projects. So if you're out there trying to shape or champion master data management within your organization or for your client, as the case may be, and you're finding that it's difficult, it may be because the people that you're talking to and trying to explain this to have misconceptions about MDM, and they probably have different misconceptions about MDM to an individual. I started to call this talk Top 10 misconceptions about master data management, but I couldn't stop there. I think I must have close to 20 for you here today, so I'm going to be rattling through them for you. Um, now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time defining MDM. Uh, I did that for you more or less back in May, so you can catch that uh, webinar in arrears if you like, uh, but I am going to spend a few minutes level setting just so we're on the same page with MDM and how important it is today. Even today, when things are a little bit more challenged, I would say, than they were in the past few years. Yes, we are still seeing MBM projects kick off and uh, advance into new subject areas and so on. Uh, when all of these misconceptions are cleared up. Cleared up. So I'm going to start with something that I must say a refrain of a couple times a week. <laughs> And that is that robust MDM is half of the effort for success of all these projects and many more. It would be impossible to list all the projects that MDM is good for. It's whatever data is good for, which is just about everything, right? But definitely we see it in fraud detection, call center chatbots. These are some of the more popular applications that companies are doing today. And if you look on the right side of the slide, you see a bunch of subject areas. Now, Sue mentioned it's more than customer and product, and I'm going to re repeat that a little bit later, but yes, it's about all of these and much more, and much more than you and I can even think about today for even your enterprise. But we're going to get into that. But my point is that you can cross-reference these applications, and you will find that if those subject areas are really mastered, and in the way that they uh, they could be at high levels, then if that data just needs to get used for these applications, you are well like half 
the way to success of that application. You just have to build the application on top of the data at that point. And by the way, this is very true for artificial intelligence based type of applications like we're all getting into, right? So those AI based applications need a voracious amount of data. Where's it gonna come from? Well, the detailed data is not gonna come from MDM, but a lot of the supplementary type of data that really puts the spotlight on the data and makes the data alive. That's MDM data. And that's gonna come from uh, MDM. Now, what are people using MDM for today? Different things. I would say this probably captures a good 60, 70% of the market here though. Customer deduplication, name and business matching, the things that you see on there, all important, don't get me wrong, but there are some organizations out there really leading the way and they've got the ball rolling downhill with master data management. So they're able to do things like mastering in supply chain management, just pick on that, delivery shipments, carriers, transport modes, material and sites. Once you do that, how far are you to mastering your supply chain? You are far. And there's so many more uses for MDM. We'll get into some of that um, Let's start by, by let me share with you where you can look for the MDM opportunities in your organization. And uh, a lot of you are trying to shape MDM for your organization. We have to find a business target for it. We can't just say it's a technical exercise. So-and-so said that we should have it uh, and so on. We have to find some business targets, business targets that need data. It shouldn't be that hard to find, really. If you look across the products that you make, the supply chain for those products, your business operations, the intelligence that you use in designing your product and services, and the intelligence used in the marketing and approval funnel. What haven't I covered here? It's a lot, but MDM really can affect all of these things. And I think that's that's really a big part of the problem with getting MDM projects kicked off. People see it as it can be, once you get past the misconceptions, it can be a lot. And there may be. I don't know, let's say it can do 20 things, which is probably about true. Uh, and you don't need 15 of them. That doesn't mean that you don't need MDM or that doesn't mean that MDM won't pay for itself or be beneficial to you. It just means that you can ignore those 15 for now because I think a lot of the uh, functions of MDM are interesting as you go forward. So it sets you up very well for getting into all of those additional functions. All right. So this is a reference architecture for MDM. Um, this is an Azure example. We have sources of data. We have our data lakes. We have our data warehouses and so on. MDM is right in the heart of this, of all of this. And if I showed all the arrows in a, in a, in a, 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 a very elegant architecture, it would just make a mess of the slide because there'd be so many arrows from MDM because it really does interface with everything when it's fully manifest within an organization. So yes, it sits somewhere in the in the in the organization either operationally, uh, well, I would say operationally, but it affects all the operational environments and the analytical environments uh, or it can. It can grow into that. And finally, by way of definition, I want to share with you that it's not just about the core attributes which is how you get started. I would say most people get started that way with all these things that are, for example, one-to-one -to, -one to a customer, date of birth, customer status, marital status, et cetera, things that you see there, but also these, what, what a lot of people call analytical attributes. I call them empowering attributes because that takes your value of MDM up to another level. MDM can be operational and analytical. And we're going to get into that. That's actually a misconception. So let's get into our misconceptions about MDM. Here, here we go. These, by the way, are good misconceptions, meaning, meaning there are things that you need to add on to your MDM program for it to succeed. But most of them are really misconceptions that people have about MDM, the discipline that holds you back from getting more into. MDM, like for example, this first one. MDM isn't necessary. We have ERP or CRM, but I think a lot of times people who say this, they, they know that MDM fits 
somewhere within a Venn diagram in their organization. But it's a lot of work to kind of ferret out, okay, what's MDM going to do and what's ERP going to do and what's CRM going to do? Uh, and when you, when you don't want to uh, go over that hill, you can easily leave MDM uh, aside. And that's, that's, that would be wrong to do because MDM fills the gap even if you have ERP or, or CRM or both. Neither one of those are really great distribution systems. ERP is not great for, for example, data quality. CRM is not really great for instantiating the data, on and on, really. MDM does a lot of things, which leads me to my next misconception. And this is kind of a big blanket, big tent misconception. MDM is just blank. Yes, uh, depends on uh, your perspective, but people come at MDM and, and I can tell I'm always trying to figure out, okay, what's this person think MDM is? <laughs> uh, data integration, or maybe it's about architecture. Maybe it's about data modeling. We, we're not doing modeling very well, so let's do MDM. How about data merge and match? That's huge. Data quality, yeah, that's a big part of it. How about workflow for, for, for building out the master data? Department A passes to department B, et cetera, et cetera, till we have a master record. How about that? Yeah, that's a part of it too. And also what about hierarchy management? Not as widely used as the others, but some shops will use that the most. So you see, it all kind of depends on your perspective and your business needs. That's why I want you to effectively fit MDM into your environment and use the functions that you need out of MBM, knowing that the others are there and that you'll probably grow into it. But don't try to boil the ocean here with MBM, find a business need, make it happen, make sure you build it scalably so you can grow out within your enterprise. And which leads me to something that I also say a lot of, and that is that MBM should be enterprise MBM. It shouldn't be just about a singular application. Yes, it can start there, but uh, once you build out customer and product, for example, who doesn't need customer and product? Which application out there doesn't need customer or product? Okay, there's a few, not too many. Most of them need it. And most of them will home grow their own if you don't have your data as a service to provide them from your MDM hub, which is how I express uh, MDM within the organization. It's data as a service. So it's all the things I mentioned again, data integration, architecture modeling, data merge and match, data quality, workflow, and hierarchy management. Now, another misconception is that it's only about technology and IT. So business users don't have to be involved. Uh, that's an IT thing. That's a technology thing. Don't give me these buzzwords because I'm, you know, I'm not going to hang with that. Just, just show me the results. Okay. It's not going to work like that. So this is a bit of a warning that you need to get the business involved in MDM. So this may be a warning for you MDM champions out there who are going to do MDM uh, to not do it this way and to not even really get into it with this thinking. This is, this is a hill I will absolutely die on a, 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 for a project, meaning that if, if I know the client thinks this and I can't disabuse them of it, and they're not going to give me any business help uh, in the project to define the data, define the data quality rules, help me uh, place it in the organization so that it's doing maximum benefit for them. Yeah, it's probably a non-starter for MDM. I hate to say it that way, but uh, it is. You've got to get more than technology and IT involved in these projects. And also, it's not a one-time project. This is, again, another kind of warning to MDM champions out there. It can be, it can start as a one-time project doing something for one application, but I say that on the side, you need to be developing a strategy. You need to be developing a strategy of where it's going to go. And the reason for this is that uh, MDM, sure, it'll, it'll pay for itself with, with one project, but it will way more than pay for itself the more it goes, the more use you get out of it. The more you build that thing once and you use it many, many times over, that's, that's the, my goal for you, is to build true enterprise MDM. So most of my misconceptions, again, have been trying to help you get to MDM. This one is a bit of a warning of something that you need 
to do. I'm not trying to burden you with strategy and it doesn't have to be a huge deal, but to get the maximum benefit and really sometimes just to justify the project, it needs to, you need to have a strategy around it. Okay, next, MDM is expensive. And I'm not going to get into dollar numbers here in terms of how expensive is MDM? Because it really does depend uh, on several scope uh, features, but these are true things about MDM here. As an enabler, it means improved project results. That's what it's all about. MDM by itself, and if you think this way, inside of an enterprise that, oh, if I build that data warehouse over there, if I build that data lake over there, well, that's no good. Um, or if I build MDM, that's no good. Uh, what was the ROI on just that? Well, you got to think a little bit beyond, okay, into the uses of these things like MDM. And for MDM, it's going to reach out and touch a project or projects within your organization. And how is it going to help make them better? The, the easiest thing I found to do is to justify the, or, uh, the, um, the, the TCL, excuse me, the TCL, meaning you are going to save money uh, by actually doing MDM because you're going to do it right. You're going to do the data part right. And that's a lot easier than saying, well, we're going to sell uh, you know, uh, 50,000 more donuts if we do MDM on this program to sell donuts. That's a little bit harder. <laughs> so MDM should be made in conjunction with most projects. Yes, most projects that are on the docket, MDM should be a part of. And project benefits are indirect. That makes it hard. And that turns, that turns people into uh, uh, naysayers about MDM. But these are things you have to go through. MDM also enables lower operating costs. And here's another one. MDM is only for large organizations. I think small organizations, mid-sized organizations, I've seen them do very well with MDM. Their scope is smaller and that's okay. Uh, their cost is lower and they're actually able to get through a lot of the value proposition for MDM a lot quicker and that's all good. And that lowers costs and that means it's not just for large organizations. All organizations out there that want to compete really need to compete on their data. And this is, a, this is MDM is the elegant way to compete on data uh, today. D to be that, what's the word for it? Uh, data champion, uh, if you will. Data-driven, data-driven organization. Yeah, that's it. Okay, next uh, is another to-do slide for you. Staff MDM projects entirely with technical people. I kind of touched on this a little bit ago. Yeah, it kind of bears repeating. And a lot of times what I've seen is that this is acknowledged up front that, oh, yeah, we have to have business involvement. And, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll offer up this, this person and that person at 10% and so on. And then we get into the project and they're not there. And uh, then we go back to, okay, it's just for technical people to do. Uh, it's not. So you want that commitment. That's a misconception. Okay, okay, another bit of warning here. MDM will fix all our data issues instantly, like data quality. I actually have had conversations with people who want to install an MDM tool because it will fix our data quality problems. And it will not. I could probably do a misconceptions about data quality presentation and I would have Enough material, trust me on that. But one of them has got to be that MDM or anything really, a data quality tool, a data integration tool will fix all your issues instantly. It won't, it's a misconception. Uh, misconceptions, uh, this is a similar misconception to what well, we buy a tool and implement it and we're on our way to the promised land without having to do all the messy work around it. Sorry, this is another to do. Uh, a warning out there for you MDM champions. Data quality needs business input, back to my prior misconception. Uh, if we get these cleared up though, we're going, to, we're going to do quite well with MDM. MDM is another data warehouse. Well, if you squint your eyes at it, it kind of looks like a data warehouse. There's data coming in and there's data going out, yes, but there's a lot of differences. MDM is operational, it's not analytical. 
It's, it's, uh, it's very uh, transactional in terms of moving data around. MDM is for master data only. You wouldn't put your transactions in MDM. Now you might bring transactions into the hub to glean some analytical value out of it and put uh, updated analytical attributes in MDM. That's all great. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about as a storage mechanism. Right now we are certainly living in a world where there's no one size fits all. You need your MDM, you need your data warehouse, you need your data lake and on and on and on. Uh, maybe time over time that will abate a bit, but right now we need them all. MDM is real time, by the way, most data warehouses are not. There are similarities though, in terms of data quality and data integration. Now data quality, uh, what I like to do with my architectures is for MDM to feed the data warehouse its data. So all those all that dimensional data, for those of you that know what I'm talking about, all that dimensional data in the data warehouse, that should come from MDM. Because in MDM, that's where we're really cleaning the data up. And that's the dimensional data that the data warehouse needs. So MDM should feed the data warehouse. It is not another data warehouse. All right, similar to that one, the MDM hub is downstream, analytical, and post-operational. No, it's, uh, it's very much operational. If you're not familiar with post-operational, that's a term I use a lot to mean the analytical environment, except when I say analytical environment, people tend to think it's just the warehouse and maybe this or that analytical hub, but I mean everything post-operational. Everything that collects data from an operational environment, an, an operational environment, meaning one that is transacting your business. Okay, I hope that helped and didn't hurt, but MDM Hub is uh, not a downstream analytical after the fact kind of database. And by the way, most of most MDM implementations out there, and certainly most of mine do involve an MDM Hub sort of the physical MDM, not the logical school of MDM. Okay, here's the big one. MDM is for customer and product only, and we're kind of doing a half job at that, and we're, we're getting by, so I don't want to make that investment. I hear that a lot. Well, uh, I doubt that a half job uh, or whatever you're doing outside of MDM is really good enough for giving you the most value for your buck. Uh, in terms of what you're doing for customer and product. Let's start with that. But uh, the misconception here says MDM is for customer and product only. There's other subject areas that it's for. Sue listed a few. I listed a few earlier real quick, but there's no limit. So I'm not trying to limit you. We're not trying to limit you here. It goes beyond. I have one client that uses uh, MDM for DNA. Uh, I couldn't have thought of that when I walked in the door and we started talking about customer or product. I forget what it was, <laughs> but eventually they got the hang of it. They figured out, oh, this is what MDM is. This is what it can do for us. We want to do more with it. And so we get beyond our first targets. We get beyond that customer product, which that's where most companies get into MDM. Uh, and usually they go to the next one, customer or product after that one. But beyond that, we're probably talking a good six months to a year into the program here. You're actually at the point then when I hope that you're, you're able to spin up multiple scrum teams, not just one doing one subject area at a time, but maybe you're able to do multiple and really pick up the pace there. Now, that being said, uh, you might you might think from what I'm saying that some customers are done with MDM. They've gone through all their subject areas. Some are close, but I don't know anybody that's done, done with their business uh, by way of MDM. Uh, I'm sure it'll happen. There's probably some out there. If so, get in touch with me. I'd love to do a case study on you, but most likely everybody's still on the journey. It is a journey, which might be another misconception that it's not a journey. It's definitely a journey, although any journey in business today must have uh, points at which we can say, okay, now we're delivering ROI. Now we're delivering the value that exceeds the cost for what it is that we're doing here. And MDM certainly has to be that as well. So don't get off on some theoretical exercise with MDM. Make sure you stay in touch with those applications that need the data 
And you provide that data as a service to those applications. And do be open-minded that MBM can go well beyond customer and product into many subject areas. And by the way, we could probably spend some time talking about how you define subject areas. I won't do that right now. I'll move on to the next misconception, which is about MBM and workflow. These are the misconceptions here. MBM has workflow. That's not a misconception, by the way. It certainly does. Uh, and we must use it. That's the misconception, that you must use the workflow. If you think you already have master data in the environment somewhere, um, OK, great. You can just move that data into MDM for all the other functions of MDM, especially the data integration part, where that data is going to get uh, integrated into all your operational systems, your analytical systems, and so on. So uh, MDM is still great in those environments that think they have MDM because it's probably sitting in a CRM system or an ERP system or somewhere where it's not really a great place to distribute that data or do hierarchy management or the other things that MDM does. Okay, great. But you know, oftentimes I find that uh, even though some people think that they may have great master data, they really don't at the end of the day. So um, by scrutinizing that data, you might find that you actually do want to use the workflow inherent within these MBM products. And that's usually where I land for most subject areas. I have one client where we did some subject areas with the workflow and we did some without. That's okay too. That could be another misconception. You got to do them all one way. You don't. And the next misconception is MBM doesn't have workflow. Um, so we must bring the master data to it. So we still got to do that function. Well, if you have to do that function outside of MDM, then MDM's value proposition is, is drastically lowered, I would say. So all the things that MDM does to create master data, it's fairly unique to MDM in terms of technologies out there. So MDM does have workflow. You don't have to use it, but it's very valuable. Okay. This is one that most people don't, I don't, I don't resonate with me on this. MDM is not for syndicated data. That's a misconception. I think it is. Usually the reason that it's this, this data is not brought into the MDM hub. And now here I'm talking about customer attributes, product attributes, uh, things that you get from a third-party marketplace or you're buying data, which third-party marketplaces have really taken off recently. So there's a lot of data out there. Think about that data, though, in terms of, is it, is it really master data? Is it something that many applications will be interested in, in my enterprise? And you'll probably find that, yes, many of the, that, <clears throat> much of that data is, especially around customer. If you're enhancing the customer dimension, mm, uh, that's just customer data. That's just customer data from a different source. So MDM is for the syndicated data, most syndicated data, I would say. Although it doesn't seem to work out that way in many enterprises because the people who manage the syndicated data are fairly removed from enterprise data architecture. Well, maybe that's what has to change to make it happen. Next uh, misconception, and this is a two-parter, MDM is for operational data or MDM is for analytical data. It's for both, okay? We can definitely use MDM uh, to bring in operational data uh, change it, generate the analytical data from there, uh, like I showed you before, the empowering at attributes, add them in there, get that exponential value uptake from MDM with that analytical data. If you have to start with operational data, that's fine. But keep in mind that what you're doing there is you're solving the problem probably of real-time data integration, which is a big problem. Okay, great, solve that problem, but do know that you can go beyond that into these analytical attributes. All MD will go as slow as the first one. The first one took an egregious amount of time, or at least in somebody's view. Who's to say really how long it, it should take? I guess uh, I guess an experienced consultant could help you out with that one. But um, ultimately, there are different challenges along the way for sure. And I, in my experience, having gone through multiple subject areas with some clients, uh, we do pick up the steam that I was talking about before. We do get to the point where you can, you can, you see the value, you want the value, 
you have all these subject areas now that you want to get that value from, and you can spin up multiple scrum teams and pick up the pace that way. But I'm here, I'm really just talking about first time through, you don't have your processes in place, you're putting them in place, you're, you're building the airplane in the air, if you will. Um, but the next time through, as long as it's not five years later with a brand new team, um, you are uh, you are adding uh, you you are you are going much faster. So there's no way for anybody to say, okay, a subject area takes three months. A subject this subject area is going to take six months. Well, it, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, how are you staffing it? What kind of experience is on the staff? Uh, what kind of numbers is, is on the staff? What kind of uh, skills and training? And which tool did you buy? Is it a good fit for you? Uh, what are you trying to do with MBM, by the way? What are you trying to do with MBM? Are you trying to do all the things that, that, that it does? That might take longer, but uh, if you're just trying to do basic data integration with MBM, it'll take a lot shorter. So there's no one size fits all with this. Um, you know, I like round numbers that say, uh, you have to break things up into quarters. So in a quarter, what are you going to get done? You may, it may not be the whole subject area, by the way. As a matter of fact, your first subject area, people pick customer or product. Like I said before, those are a couple of the most difficult subject areas in the enterprise, but I get it. That's where a lot of value can be derived from, but don't think that they're all gonna go that way, especially if they're a smaller subject area. So subject areas, yeah, you'll pick up the pace. How about and what everybody's talking about, and I had to get it into my presentation, generative AI. MDM will be unaffected by generative AI. Generative AI will automate many of the tasks that are currently performed by human analysts, such as data clean cleaning, feature engineering, and model training. As this generative AI begins to take on the analytics function in organizations, it will utilize the data in master data management. So uh, this is has yet to be done, or at least in my in in my walk. But uh, I'm sure that it's coming. Customer segmentation, for example, generative AI can use MDM data to segment customers into groups based on their demographics, purchase history, and other factors like that. And this can help organizations to target their marketing campaigns more effectively. For example, this is also true around product recommendations, fraud detection risk assessment, demand forecasting, et cetera. So MDM is for fully centralized organizations. Now, back in April, I gave a presentation and I got into Data Fabric and Mesh. So if you're not familiar with that, um, you can check out that presentation. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Data Fabric and Mesh and these decentralized types of architectures. I am too, by the way, uh, I am somewhat becoming an advocate of doing things of this nature. I think I already have been doing it for quite a while. And now we're adding a little science to our data architecture environments, which is great. But the choice of whether updates should be performed centrally or decentrally within the organization, it's a key consideration to master data management as well. A decentralized approach may be simpler to manage within a large organization because it leaves data closer to where it's created and used. So instead of having one big hub for the whole organization, you might have a few. You might have them out in different departments and then they might come together in some sort of centralized hub or they may not. But either way, MDM fits into these decentralized architectures. And by the way, I love to put MDM on the data mesh because that just makes that data much more accessible by all the applications within the environment, which I hope is our goal. And finally, my last misconception for you today, you won't need organizational change management with MDM. And nobody's job will change as a result of MDM. Jobs will change if you do it, if you do it uh, in a big way. Jobs will change if you do it right. Jobs will change if you want to fully utilize MDM. And one of the big ways that it will change is in the use of the workflow. Remember the workflow? Where data gets passed around from department to department before a master record is formed uh, at the end of the day and pushed into the hub for distribution. So whatever process you're using today to do that, and I've been in environments where it literally involved file cabinets and faxes, and this is, yeah, 20, that was 2022, 
and various other environments that do maybe not faxes and file cabinets, but they do other forms of master data management, <laughs> uh, if you will. And uh, those jobs absolutely change with MVM. And that might be a, a big example, but I, I'm sure within every MDM project that jobs will change. And let's not be afraid to, to say this up front early and often, and sometimes even to make it happen with uh, the job description of the people involved. Yes, I go to that, I go to that extreme because uh, I want people to understand how important MDM is. We're not just doing something casual. Remember, when you say MDM up front, Half of the people are going through the uh, the seven what it, whatever it is the seven stages of distress where they go through the, the denial the anger and all that all that stuff right um, and uh, uh, but what coming out the other end of your MDM project is going to be success so they're going to have to get around to acceptance so they're going to need some organizational change management and by the way o OCM it's not just about job changes it's about communication it's about people understanding what the new world is gonna look like once you have MDM in place. Uh, and this gives me an opportunity to say, come back next month because next month, organizational change management with these data projects is going to be the topic of our advanced analytics webinar. So I'll see you then and we're gonna talk in more detail about organizational change management. For now, I'm gonna summarize the presentation. If you have any questions, Hopefully you've been putting them in the Q&A. Go ahead and do that now. If you have any questions for me, for Sue, for Ian, we're gonna answer your questions in just a minute here once I finish up the summary. The MDM world is full of misconceptions. Have I made that clear? Have I made it clear that not only is it full of misconceptions, there are, everybody's coming at it with a different set of misconceptions. So you as the champion of MDM have your work cut out for you. MDM is much more versatile than most people realize. Yes. And don't boil the ocean with MDM. Find your little wins. Uh, make sure that you check in quarterly with what the ROI is, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing I love to say, MDM is not an option. You got you to have master data in some way, shape, or form. Again, which application doesn't need it? I, I can't think of any. MDM is not an option. Uh, MDM... Uh, what is an option is how you do it. If you do it the right way with a great tool and you, you know everything is, that's involved and you have a plan and you execute on that plan. But you know the, the, the halfway that many folks are doing today and which I did for years and years and years too, right? Is to do things like, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's use the data warehouse for MBM or let's use this operational database and we'll, we'll squeeze it out of CRM and stuff like that. Okay. Though that's your options really, but to do master data itself, not an option. So let's dispel the misconceptions out there about master data management. Uh, Shannon, back to you, and let's see if we have any questions. William, thank you so much. And just to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. So diving in here, lots of great questions coming in. Um, this question came in early, you know, do you need RDM before MDM? Sorry, uh, and Sue, I know that this was something that you wanted to look at as well. Sue, go ahead. Uh, actually, I, I um, RDM before MDM, I'm not sure that's something that we did talk about. I'm assuming we're talking about uh, requirements doc, right? Do you need to have uh, a plan? <laughs> reference data management. Do you need reference data management? I was looking at it a couple of different ways. Um, you know, it depends on what your what your use case is, right? Um, I think you really need to look at what it is that you're trying to accomplish uh, if reference data is part of the use case that you're looking at as far as whatever the domain is that you have. I can jump in there real quick. So I, I would say RDM is not something you need before MDM. And the reason I'm saying that is because as part of what we offer at Relteo, we do have reference data that we provide along with the MDM solution. So we can get that all set up for you. Yeah, and I'll just add that, um, and this is something that um, rubs people the wrong way sometimes when I say it, I'm not gonna have time to really develop uh, this statement, but I'll just make it. And I think that, that uh, reference data management is really just uh, MDM light. 
it's, it's MDM for subject areas that really don't have a lot of complexity to it. You can still handle them through MDM, as Ian just said, but uh, you need a plan for which, which subject areas are important to, to the applications under development, and uh, you need a plan for bringing them together in time for those applications needs. And if that means that some of these are going to get classified as reference data management, then so be it. Perfect. So, I, uh, so I'm curious on the uh, AstraZeneca uh, case study I mean, or example um, to consolidate. How long was the timeline to consolidate their 66 MDM systems to three? Yeah, that, that was, as you can imagine, a pretty complex undertaking and task. Uh, that took about a year to rationalize all of that data from all those systems. And it's a global company, data spread out everywhere. And so we had an implementation team, a global GSI partner. And all of us worked on it together and, and got them to that uh, outcome and saving them that amount of money. Nice. So how is generative AI being used to automate the manual process of MDM tasks? For example, matches that are below a minimum threshold and require human review. Have many vendors incorporated generative AI to improve MDM results? So um, I, I will let the Sue and, and Ian uh, answer respectively for their products, but I would say that I do see, I do see this uh, getting into products uh, these days, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity for automation within MDM using generative AI, especially around that workflow, which the questioner uh, kind of touched on there. Right, um, these decisions that are made uh, in the workflow um, can be automated. Definitely, the the ones that say have so and so review it. Uh, and, and answer yes or no, or whatever, to the uh, to the workflow, that can definitely be automated. Um, well, let's just understand what so-and-so is, is, is doing when they actually look at the record and let's bake it in. Uh, and, and if it's artificial, if it's to the complexity of an artificial intelligence need, then, then so be it with uh, generative AI. So that's a couple areas that generative AI will affect MDM. Absolutely. We're definitely seeing uh, AI bringing, being brought in uh, uh, for doing things, a, a, as, as William just mentioned, but also like uh, looking at recommendations for quality improvements, recommend, recommendations for enrichment. And actually, this is a big one, recommendations around policy enforcement. So looking for uh, PII and information that may be coming in that needs to be scrutinized further along that line. So it's definitely going to impact things. Yeah, and I'll jump in there. You know, obviously, many of our customers are expecting some sort of advanced automated solution in the future using generative AI, large language models, NLP. So the first thing that we have done and we're continuing to do is just using machine learning models to automate the process of matching. So instead of putting in rules and manually creating the rules for matching and getting to that single consolidated view of a record, have the model automatically detect and create that matching mechanism for you. So that automates the process of matching records that are similar. Uh, generative AI obviously adds even more capabilities on top of that. The area that's interesting for us at least is using natural language processing. So one example is, as you try to search for records within the system, you could have a conversational interface where a user types in, give me all of the customers that are located in this region that meet criteria X, Y, and Z, and simply just types that and the results are populated. So looking at MDM holistically, there's a lot of ways to incorporate that technology. and we are certainly going to incorporate and integrate that where it makes sense and automate, it, and automate bits and pieces of MDM moving forward. Perfect, I love it. Such a hot topic right now, right? Uh, what, how is generative AI gonna be incorporated into anything and everything? I love it. Well, um, so many great questions, but I'm afraid that is all the time we have today. William and Aya and Sue, thank you so much for uh, speaking today. And thanks to Precisely and thanks to Reltio for sponsoring today's webinar and helping make these webinars happen. Again, just a reminder to everybody, I will be uh, 
I was sending a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording of the slides, a uh, recording of the webinar. And it, so hope you all have a great day. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.